So a client comes along and they don't just want you to clean their data, they want it analyzed and maybe even create predictions for how it's gonna look in the future. What this means is that they want you to use coding to swift through the data. So how do you learn coding and how do you learn it fast? Well, here are my five tips. Number one, make best friends with Python. Remember that first friend you met in high school that was so easy to get along with and that could introduce you to all the other older cooler kids? Well, that's Python. Python is designed to be a highly readable programming language, but in order to become best friends with Python, you need to spend some time getting to know its fundamentals. And what are those fundamentals? Data structures, stacks, queues, trees, symbol tables, types of data, lists, sets, tuples, dictionaries, and the syntax, which is the way the language is formed in the first place. So once you know these fundamentals, Python is gonna become your best friend on your data science journey. Two, break the problem into smaller pieces. Or how I actually like to think of this is simply go in order. Regardless of how big the project is or what the actual end goal is, simply go in order. Acquire your data, clean it, sanitize it, perform exploratory data analysis, and actually then think of what your code needs to accomplish. Which actually brings me to number three, code by hand or use pseudocode. Once you break your problem into smaller pieces, grab a piece of paper and start writing in plain English what you want your code to accomplish. This is called pseudocode and this is how it works. All right, so we have a client who wants to know which customers are buying their high-end products. So here we can say that the problem would be that we need to create a function which checks whether a customer has spent a certain amount of money, which in our case would be $19 or more on their products. For this particular problem, we need to create an if clause. And that is like this. So we need to check whether the customer has spent $19 or more. And we do that by the if clause. So if amount spent by customer is greater or equal to 19. Print, customer paid more or equal to $19. Else, all right, so before we get into the else clause, I want to tell you that you use the print statement here because you want your program to actually return on your screen whether a customer has paid more than the required amount or not. So when we go back to the if clause here on the else uh, statement, we print again, customer didn't spend the required amount. So if amount spent by customer is greater or equal to 19, which is also stated here in the problem, the customer has to spend more than $19, we print to the client, yes, the customer actually paid more or equal to $19. Else, if the customer didn't do that, then we print to the client, customer didn't spend the required amount, so we know whether or not the client is interested in their high-end products or not. Okay, so we have it in pseudocode right now, but let's turn it into Python code. As we stated in the beginning, we need to create a function which checks whether or not the customer has spent more than $19. And if you remember the syntax of Python, we need to create a function with the def. Def stands for definition or function. So def check amount. This, you can call it whatever you want as long as it's relevant to your cause. And the amount the amount here is a variable that actually is stored in your data. So this is how you define your function. Now let's get into the if clause again. So if the amount is greater or equal to 19, we return on the screen or print exactly as we said in the pseudocode. Customer paid more or equal to $19. So you see how easy it is to turn pseudocode into an actual Python code 
It's very readable and is really logical when you actually turn it into code. I love pseudocode. I use it all the time when I'm actually trying to break down a bigger problem just to feel the grasp of how the code is actually supposed to look like. Number four, implement code on crucial variables. A lot of the times in real life cases, your data is going to be huge, it's going to be messy and it's going to be very hard to understand. But you see, the problem here is not how big the data is. The problem is how many variables you look at. So you actually need to be specific on which variables you plug into your model. Okay, that's easier said than done, but how do you actually do this? Well, I have this little system that I like to remind myself called RIC. R-I-C. RIC. I really like RIC. He's a really cool guy. R is for refer. Keep referring to the original question that first started this analysis or that the client asked you in the first place. For example, what is the lifetime value of a certain customer? I is for Intuit. Use your intuition on what might be relevant for that question. For instance, what is the customer's age when they first buy? C is for Create. Get creative on testing variables against each other and see which one might be actually relevant. For instance, age when they first buy or average annual income. I really hope you like that system. There's a lot more I can say about my friend Rec, but we will leave this to another video. Number five, don't just copy paste. At least sort of understand every line of sample code. All right, this is an important one. Just like everyone else, when you first start out coding, you will start Googling your issues to find a possible solution on Stack Overflow, for example. The problem is, if this works, and you move on without understanding of why it works, you will have no idea how to fix it when you run into a problem hundreds of lines of code later on. All right, that's it for today. Please let me know down in the comments how you liked the video, which one of the tips was helpful for you, and I will see you in the next one.